All right, construction cronies, welcome to another metal stud framing video, man. This time I'm going to be showing you guys uh, a little bit about building bulkheads. This is a subway that we're doing. So if you've ever been to a subway sub place and you're ordering your sandwich and you're telling them what you want on it, that's what we're doing. We're building that front area right now. So what I've done is I've already we've already set up the lasers, checked the elevations. We found the high side of the concrete, and that is where we're taking our final elevation from. Is from the high side, okay? Um, uh, remember that, guys. I'm assuming you already know how to do that. You can see we have multiple lasers set up. There's a, 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 a line laser in the just over to the left of us here uh, that is pinning up the corner and the two ways of the bulkhead. Okay, it, it comes down and returns into the back furring wall. And then there's a line laser here. I'm assuming that's probably just plumbing up centers or whatever, right? But we've got all our layout pre-done so what i'm doing right this second is i'm counting how many studs you need simple roll your tape out and uh yeah you need one stud for every foot basically uh, you can simply just count the uh red dots on the tape measure okay guys and make sure you got enough for your corners all right let's get going man let's get going here hope everyone's doing well had a good holiday i'm uh this is the first video i've been actually had time to edit we've been so busy we got six active jobs going right now when we got so many planned we're booked we're late to february simple guys this is a cold cut saw the reason why i'm showing you this is because uh you see i'm marking as many as i can and i'm also writing on them uh my height so i don't get them confused right i'm writing it on both sides okay uh you can see my abrasive saw here in the back but this is a cold cut saw this is different this is kind of neat man um but yeah so we're just pre-cutting all our studs uh marat's up in the lift he's installing clips which i'm going to show you that in a second and i'll also give you guys a rundown of what up with those okay there we are there's the clips you can see the clips right there already installed what we're doing is um uh because the joists are running this way and the bulkhead is going is right in between the the trusses i mean sorry you can see these are wood trusses every two foot apart so our our bulkhead lands in the middle of two so we don't want to screw our uh track to the uh, roof or anything like that we want we want the 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 bulkhead to be at the truss height okay so we cut studs with one inch uh, inch and a half tabs on either end of the stud then screw them in between every 16 inches right two screws on each side boom boom so each each stud has uh, four screws in it and that's what we fasten our top track to this is our top track right here okay that's what we fasten the top track to um there's this is all black roof so it's hard to see the wood trusses but trust me they're there what he's doing here is installing uh the the top track you got line lasers everywhere here guys uh, but you can do this with uh, just even one line laser okay but um you can make marks okay you make your ticks on the uh, on the studs and that helps speed up the process when you're hanging your track because sometimes when you're hanging your hanging track or whatever your your body is getting in the way of the laser so it'll take more time trying to f fudge around to see the laser line and um, uh, also too the track will bend out sometimes and so the split of the beam won't be perfect right so if you just make a mark in the center of the laser line you're you're good every time and that's you just clamp your top track right on the mark and screw it in done right so no messing around there he's marking his centers and 16s as he goes you can see right here on the side of the lift here i got a bunch of studs ready to go for him all right so simple as that and like i said if you have any questions guys just ask me down below in the comments man and i will totally get back to you when you're joining your track together on the top here okay you can just cut a fishtail right down the middle of the the, the track okay just two inches in and that'll um uh that'll help you know just slip the one side in and, and that means you only, and then you only have to clamp the the far side okay uh as a little bonus here uh, I want to show you the back furring wall. Okay, this back furring wall right here has what well, uh, has a, a piece of track screwed in face facing the the like screwed into the wall here. Okay, and w what that allowed us to do is get screws in the studs of the back wall and super strong. Then oh, and we set this stud at elevation, right? So ten foot studs, we go up ten foot half inch, right? So that way we just screw our top track to the stud 
or the track or whatever. Um, usually studs cheaper, right? So we'll put stud back there. Uh, but yeah, you just screw it up to the stud, and then you can also put screws in through this track to the back wall. Okay, and this is when you know the furring wall here, like this back wall is perfectly level, so you can just go tight to the wall, right? Otherwise, you want to come out a quarter inch, okay? Um, and then sometimes if it's really bad and out of level, it might be more. So make sure you check to make sure this back wall is level before you do, do it this way. Otherwise, what you do is you just cut studs or track and make clips, okay? You just bend them, you know, like I can't even draw it, but just bend them and you, you screw them into the wall and then you screw them into the face of the of the studs okay all right a little bonus there let's uh let's see what Murat's up to here now yeah you can see clips every 16 inches apart and we're putting two screws in the track through to the clip and each clip has four screws okay inch and a quarter drywall screws into the wood simple as that but yeah check this out right those back uh, tracks that he's installing is in a, a part of the bulkhead we have a uh, hood going in there okay you see the end here Okay, the corner is, you're just doing it like a normal wall, like you would any other wall, okay? You're overlapping your tracks in the corners, and you can see the back wall here where he's got the, the piece of track or stud there screwed into the this other bulkhead. That's picking up the end of the, of the, of the track for the bulkhead, okay? So got lots of strength there, probably spanned across at least the 16, so you got screws in studs even probably. Uh, if not, it's not even a big deal. You just use inch and a quarter screws and you screw them down in an angle so that the this piece, this clip, does not fall off. And here you can also see the, the back wall the furring wall the, with the track uh, face, uh, face to, the, to the back wall. So easy, guys, right? And this is because we're dropping this bulkhead and returning it into this back furring wall. And there she is, finished. Let's see if I can get a better shot. Okay, so you can see now this is the finished product. So what what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to talk you through how uh, how to get this quickly done. So we've you've seen us getting the elevations. We set the line laser up, okay, uh, somewhere here, and we've dropped our tape down from the top track, and we've got the elevation what i do is i just kind of go along and i write the elevations in between like for every 10 foot piece of track okay so what i'll do is i'll put a i'll hang a um a stud near the end of the 10 foot piece of track and uh, one in the middle and i'll just clamp it to the end okay the end stud clamp it here clamp it here and set my elevation Okay, that's what I'll do. And then I'll stud it out after. Okay, I'll get my stud height and I'll stud it and I'll back stud it. Okay, um, and then I'll go ahead. I'll put a stud here. I'm going to cut a two inch fishtail on the end of my uh, on the end of my new piece of track and I'm going to slip it on here. That way I only have to clamp it in on that stud here. Okay, slip it, slip it in here and that's holding it up for me. And then I just put a clamp here, set it to elevation, put a middle stud in, set it to elevation, done. Set, uh, stud it out. Okay, and then so on. I'll put a stud in, fit another fishtail, slip in the track, clamp this side, set it elevation, square everything, and screw it off. Okay, and then uh, and then stud it off. Um, making sure everything's square in the in the in the end studs, middle studs. Okay, at least at the very least. Okay, it's uh, important. Now, there's another way you can do this is you can just simply hang all the studs and then and then come back and put your track on. Okay, that's another way to do it. Just make sure you're always checking your elevation and that you have enough room. I always keep my studs a quarter inch uh, shorter, okay, up from the bottom track. I like to have a quarter inch space between the bottom of my stud and the bottom track. Okay, that's a handy, very just good practice, okay, because you don't want to be out of square or having it push and be wavy or anything funky all right so when you're joining your your joints together it's an it's very important to um clamp the very corner okay the very very corner of the track on both sides and put a screw in okay you got to watch for, for you got to watch the joints okay check it with a laser okay on either side make sure it is perfectly straight and um it and it won't move once you start putting screws in okay um but yeah just um beware of the joints okay check them with the laser make sure they're straight 
before you uh as you're putting your screws in okay and then you're you're gonna be all good there uh yeah and then yeah doing your layouts always uh following your 16s as you go uh one last thing here before uh i, I play this rest of this video what i think is these clips okay these are important uh, because these are what you use. Um, you can see maybe something here. There's like a clip here, yeah, uh, on the end studs. When you don't have drywall, okay, clips, this is how you attach your, your studs, okay? On this side here, obviously, we're screwing into the bottom, into the bottom track, okay? But um, in the middle, it's good to have strength as well. Okay, and once we, uh, if this is a floater stud and it passes through and you screw through the, the clip, man, it's, it's very, very strong. But this is just a stud, again, cut with a one inch lip on either side, cut to fit in between the stud, right, with one inch, uh, inch and a half lip on either side, screw it in, screw it in, you're, and you're laughing, and that's how you screw those studs in. Um, and this soft fit on the bottom here, okay, uh, angle on this side, angle on this side, and furring bar. You're going to see that in a, in a second here, okay? But uh, keep that in mind. That soffit is also something that we're going to take a look at here too. But yeah, the opening for the hoods, bracing that front uh, bulkhead back to the back one above T-bar height is the way is just, yeah, that's how it's done. You can see the clips there in action. Take notes, guys. Just look at what we're doing and 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 copy it, right? Just make sure you know your elevations and you and you're checking your making sure everything's good, right? Same corner on the top and the bottom. Done. If you guys have any questions at all, make sure you leave them down below in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope everyone had a good holidays. Love teaching you guys what I know. And if you learned something, hit that like button. If you guys want to see how we drywalled this and check the T-bar out and all these finished jobs, check out my on-site live streams playlist, guys. This is Chris. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.